Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. It will be a low poly model and only one texture so great for games but also really great fun to create. This course is aimed at a beginner to intermediate level so people that have done a few of my beginner courses should find this okay to follow. If you're a beginner, then check out those before attempting this course. So for those people that want to learn about making very efficient, stylized, hand-drawn game models in Blender. If you like what I do and want to make a full game-ready character, then take a look at my character course, and take a look in the description for my other courses, other playlists on this channel, for lots of educational content. So I'm using Blender 2.92. My shortcut keys will be displayed down the bottom here. So let's begin. First of all, we want to bring our reference image in. This is the reference image that we'll be using. You can find this in the links in the description. Also, if you want to learn how to draw like this for reference images, then check out my course, Learning to Draw, Creating Game Art. So we can simply drag and drop this reference from the folder into Blender like this. I'll close that window down. And with that object selected, you can see at the top here, it's created an empty for us. That means it won't render. So it's just a simple reference for us to trace around but you can see it brings it in perpendicular to the camera. So if I press Alt-G to remove any movement and Alt-R to remove any rotation, it will bring it back to the center like this. Then RX90 will put it upright like this and I'll go to wireframe mode so we can easily see it and we're ready to trace around. So I'll zoom in a bit and in order to trace around this, we can place objects in based on our background image here. So I'll start with the default cube and I'll press one on my numpad to go to front view and just scale that down and bring it to the side here and that's going to be the center object just here. So I'm going to need to edit this cube by going into edit mode with tab and I need to move these vertices around so it meets up with this object. Now at the moment if I left click on one of these and then move it, it only moves that one vertex. So you can see it's moved that one vertex out of position. I'll undo that. What you'll want to do if I go back to front view with one on my numpad is box select these. So it selects the back one as well, as you can see there. Now you can only do this in wireframe or x-ray mode. So if I do this in solid mode and go back to front view and box select this, it doesn't select the back one as well. So I'll come back to front view, go to wireframe mode, then I can box select and it will select the back one. At that point, I can go to front view and let's zoom in a bit more and start moving these into position. So box select, G to grab, and move it into position. Box select those, G to grab, and move it into position. And obviously I haven't got enough vertices to continue. So to create more, one way is to press Control R to create a loop cut. And you can see that yellow line. If I left click on that, I can then move it up and down. And around there should be fine. And then left click again. And what that's done is created a loop all the way around my object. So I'll go back to front view and then I can start box selecting these and moving them into position again. I'll do another loop cut just here then. So control R, left click, and then I can move it into position and left click again. Box select these, grab them and move them, box select these, grab them and move them. Now I need to bring this section along here. So for this, I'll just quickly go to solid mode so it makes more sense and come around to the side. I need to select this face here and extrude it out. So three to go to face mode or press the face mode up here and select that face at the front. Back to front view and zoom in a bit and E to extrude. So E will pull out a new face and then I can grab it and move it into position. I'll do that twice more. E to extrude, grab it and move it into position and E to extrude grab it and move it into position. Now it's not lining up yet, but if I go to wireframe mode now, I can also go to vertex mode by coming up here or pressing one on my keyboard and then box selecting these and G to grab and moving them into position. Now fairly even spacing with your vertices will help. It just makes it a bit easier when it comes to understanding your shape. And you don't need much more detail than I've got here because it's a nice low poly object. We might add more when we start joining it up to the other meshes. Okay, let's go back to solid mode and think about how wide we want it to be. Well, we certainly don't want it that wide. So I can select all with A and then scale in the Y to bring it in. And the Y axis is across here and the X axis is across here. If you're confused about the axes, then check out your Cartesian coordinates at the top here. But it's difficult to know how thin I want to make it because there's no front reference image. 
but I know these middle bits here are cylindrical, so I can place those in and then get the idea of how big this is going to be from those. So I'll go back into object mode with tab and press Shift A to add mesh and I'm looking for a cylinder. So I'll bring that cylinder in and down the bottom left here you'll have a dialog box which will give you lots of things you can change. The main one we want to change is the vertex count or the vertices. 32 is way too many for a low poly object. We can bring that down to 12. I always use a number that's divisible by four in case I want to use the mirror tools, which I'll talk about later on. There's lots of other things you can change, but that will work fine for us now. So I'll go to front view again. Now notice as soon as I move it, scale it or rotate it and left click to apply, this changes and I can't change those settings anymore. So make sure you change them when you add it. Then I can rotate this by the Y axis. That's the axis kind of coming towards us. 90 degrees and then I can scale it in the x-axis and sort of scale it along here G to grab to move it into position. Let's go to wireframe again and zoom in on that. What we might find easier actually is solid mode and x-ray mode so we can kind of see a grey outline but also see through it. So with the cylinder selected let's go into edit mode and start trying to match it up a little bit more. So control R to do a loop cut and long to here and I'll scale it in and I'm just pressing S to scale because I want it to be uniform, so that's going to scale all these vertices that are selected inwards. I'll go back to front view, and there's a slight taper outwards, so this goes in and then outwards up here, as it sort of goes bigger and bigger to the end. So I'll do another loop cut here, Control R, and I'll just scale that to the outside slightly, and I'll box select all these end ones and scale them up. So it's got that taper that we want. What about these sections here? Well, we can press Control R, and bring it across and create a loop cut there. Now you'll find this with a lot of reference images that they're drawn curved like this to show some sort of 3D aspect and we're obviously turning that into 2D so we're taking that top point there and just going down from there. So Control R again, go across and we've got the two sides of this kind of lip thing here. And we can bring in the points for the other one as well. Now notice though that this does actually curve outwards slightly. So if I select the endpoints here, by box selecting them and use the proportional edit, I can scale that in and it will scale them all in proportionally. And there's my circle of influence where I use the wheel and I can go out a bit further and adjust the other ones as well. So I can kind of scale that down to around there. I'll turn off the proportional edit and I can just select them all and scale them in. So S to scale, but Shift X will not scale them in the x-axis. So if I remove that just by pressing S it will scale them all inwards but Shift X won't scale them in the x-axis. So we can bring those into a roundabout there. Okay so let's come out of edit mode back to solid mode as well and start having a look at what we've got and that's looking great. Now we can start thinking about the size of this so I'll just bring this in a bit so scale in the Y I think to a roundabout there for now and we can create the curves and things later on. Okay so we're getting there I'll go to front view again back into this object and into edit mode and select these end vertices like this but I've made a mistake try and think what that mistake is I've selected them in solid mode so if we go around to the back the back ones aren't selected so make sure you're in x-ray mode here or in wireframe mode there I'll go to solid mode and x-ray mode come back to the front and select those front verts and then I can extrude them and bring out this end section here so E to extrude and rather than going this way, I'm going to press S to scale. And it will scale them outwards so I can get the size of this first big cylinder here. And then left click and then E to extrude to extrude them out along the x-axis there. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we've taken this group here and press E to extrude and then S to scale to bring them out to here. And then E to extrude again to bring them out to the end. OK, I'll go back to front view. Now, rather than box selecting these edge loops, you can actually press Alt left click and select edge loops like this. So Alt left click will select edge loops. So I'll do that at the end here. Now, I'm going to make a mistake that lots of people make and it causes them lots of problems. So I'll show you a problem you might come across. If I press E to extrude and then move it slightly and then think, actually, no, I don't want that. I'll left click um, and then I'll try it again. So E to extrude, S to scale, oh, that's the one, that's how we do it. But unfortunately, I've created an extra edge loop here. 
And lots of people do that accidentally. They create lots of extra geometry that they don't need. And they have sort of faces and all sorts inside each other. And just watch out for doing that. So I've undone those edits. Cross to front view, E to extrude, S to scale to bring it upwards. And left click to set that, E to extrude, bring it outwards to the end here. And then E to extrude, G to grab to bring it out to the front and S to scale to bring it up. So that time I didn't have to scale first, I could just grab it outwards, then scale it. Now let's see what that's looking like. Let's go out of X-ray mode. It's looking pretty ginormous at the end, so I might have to adapt the design slightly. Let's go back to front view. And also I think if I press E to extrude, I think it needs a bit of an end over here as well to kind of give it some substance. I think it's just about working. It's a little bit over the top, but it certainly looks fun. Okay, so I'm going to discuss one more thing. If I go back to wireframe mode and into front view and take a look at our reference image. Now these look like they're separate objects because they're made out of a different material to this one. Yet I've modeled them out of the same single object. So let's quickly go back to object mode and back to solid mode. You can see that all oh, this is one object, but I've got a separate object there. How do I know when to make something all one object or make it a separate object? Well, eventually this whole thing is going to be one object and we're going to join these two things up. But for now, I'm just blocking in the big shapes and then I'll work out how I'm going to join them together later on. So for this, if I go to front view and wireframe mode again, it's easy to model this as one shape because it's just extrusions with scaling and extruding and so forth. Whereas these two to join together is a bit more complicated and I'll have to think a bit more about that. So I find it easier to start off with separate models like this for complex shapes. So the trigger, the trigger guard, the sort of flint striking bit here, the telescopic sight thing at the top, I'll model those as separate objects. Then at the end, I'll join them all together. Okay, so a challenge to you then is to have a go at modeling the site at the top yourself. Don't worry too much about the glass at the front. You can have a go, but you might want to wait and see how I've done it. So pause the video, have a go at that, and then restart to see how I complete it. Okay, I'll just move that into the center. Make sure you're in object mode. Don't add an object in edit mode. But if you do accidentally do that, so I'll go to edit mode with this shape and add a new object. So shift A to add. You'll notice straight away that I only get the mesh menu. That's because we're adding it to a mesh so we can't add any of the other objects like lights or curves because it's already a mesh object. And I want to add a cylinder. So it's got the same settings, that's fine. Then we can grab it and start moving it into position, scale it down, R, Y, 90 to rotate it around the Y axis. I'll scale it down into position. And then I suddenly realize, oh no, I've added the two objects together. So when I go back to object mode now, with tab on my keyboard, let's go back to solid mode so we can see it. We can see by pressing G that they're both linked together. So I'll right click to cancel that. If I go to edit mode now, I can separate them with P. So I remember that by thinking separate. And there's an option down here, loose parts. Now when I go back to object mode, they are separate objects. So I'll go back to this one. And you must go back into object mode, select the object you want, then back into edit mode to start editing. I'll go back into edit mode with tab, into x-ray mode, front view, and start moving these things around. So I'll grab these ones at the front, G, then X to move them across. These ones at the back, G, then X to move those backwards. Control R and left click and move that along. Control R, left click, move that along. And again and again. And we've got those sort of supports. Now I'll select the end edge loop here, Alt left click, and E to extrude and S to scale. Now it's a little bit tricky to see, but hopefully you can see those edge verts there. And left click to set, and then E to extrude outwards. E to extrude, S to scale, and upwards. E to extrude outwards. And I've modeled that top site pretty much anyway. Okay, let's go out of X-ray mode and back into solid mode there and see where we're getting to. It's a good start. In the next session, I'll be finishing off the rest of the object and then start talking about how we can start adding details like the glass and the flint striking thing and so forth. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and learned something. If you want to support me, then my PayPal is at the bottom there or you can become my patron. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for those that watched an advert and particular thank you to those that donate or are my Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.